I'll start with a very quick introduction because apparently you can't find a lot about me on the internet and that is, um, is deliberate, actually. I think it's a good thing. Um, I've been in Romania two years. I'm originally from the UK. Um, I live in Bucharest quite happily with my wife, Valerie, um, and my daughter, Georgia, she's eight, um, and also our, our two cats who always seem to, to, uh, to get a mention. There's some people from Heineken here that are uh, smiling at that. Um, I'll start by saying I'm maybe going to disappoint some of you with the title of the presentation because if you think I'm going to tell you that I think that everything that we've learned and know about leadership has been ripped up and should be thrown away because of COVID, um, then yeah, you're going to be disappointed because, because that's not really, um, not really my message. Um, I think COVID um, accelerates certain things. It's acting as a, uh, as a catalyst, and I will come on to that. But, but everything that we uh, hopefully already know and that we work on uh, as leaders on ourselves and, uh, and our businesses, um, I think is still very important. Um, oh, by the way, I'm also not going to mention, I will now, but I'm not going to mention the dreaded new normal, okay? So I think I got tired of hearing that in, I think, in May, June time. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and stay away from that. So leadership fundamentals, um, what are we talking about? Well, you will all have your own interpretation of, of leadership and what makes a good leader, okay? So... Um, we think of things, I think, to do with a leader's character, a leader's values. We think of things like empathy, courage, vision. Um, I think ultimately a leader um, understands themselves and their impact on other people and obviously the impact on their, their businesses in the outside world. Um, you can also, I think, define leadership in certain dimensions. So. Uh, I think a good leader um, is able to shape the future. They develop their people, they develop their teams, they develop themselves. Um, they connect. So they can connect clearly and in a personal way with lots of different type of, uh, types of people, different cultures, different backgrounds, different, different viewpoints. Um, and ultimately, leaders uh, deliver. So let's not kid ourselves. Um, all of this, ultimately, in business anyway, is about delivery. And good leaders deliver results. So I think that's how, how, how I capture it. And I think our role as leaders, ultimately, is to, um, to create the conditions that then our people can grow and that they can contribute the best that they can. That's the way that, that um, I would try and put it in a nutshell. And that stuff that is a constant journey, certainly for myself, is a constant journey. I'm constantly self-reflecting on which elements of this am I good at, which am I bad at, which do I need to do better at. That doesn't go away in the, um, in the new reality that we're now facing. We need, to, um, we need to keep that. But COVID has been a catalyst. It, it has changed um, a lot of things. And this is not a presentation about... Um, leadership in a crisis. It, it, that's not what it's about. Um, but I do just want to quickly try and paint the picture a little bit because I will then get on to some of what the learnings um, that have come about um, in Heineken, Romania anyway, and for myself personally, because of this situation. Um, and I think probably a, a management team of a multinational company is not somewhere that you always look at uh, 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 sympathetically, um, l let's put it that way. Um, but I can tell you March and April of this year were two of the most intense and uh, difficult times that I've experienced in my career so far. And I hope that I don't have to go through that again. It was brutal. And I know from speaking to colleagues that I know well in other FMCG businesses in Romania that it was brutal for them uh, as well. And I see customers um, uh, also found it tough. Any business uh, found it tough. Um, and to try and give you an idea of that, you know, 
we could see it coming. It was like watching a tidal wave coming towards uh, the business, and you knew you couldn't get out of the way. You just hoped that you could swim afterwards. That, that's what it was like. And, and Heineken Romania has, um, we have four breweries. We're a national player. We have the head office in Bucharest. We have 1,200 colleagues. And I felt personally a really strong sense of responsibility for their safety because quite often you're dealing with difficult situations but I'd never dealt with anything like this before and safety is always there as a priority for us always but it's it's never there and it really was um, and so we had um, two months of working days working nights working weekends we were getting midnight briefings from the government on a Saturday night we had people uh, stranded in other countries that couldn't get back. We had people who had returned from other countries that would then be classified as red or yellow, which means we need to isolate them, bring them out of the business. Um, and all of this, we need to keep the business going because beer is a business inextricably linked to uh, social occasions. And those social occasions were suddenly stopped. And we just didn't know exactly what the impact was going to be. So whilst we were trying to manage the very much the here and now, the ordering the masks and the gloves, and the, we didn't even know what social distancing was uh, back in March. So whilst we were getting over the shock of all of that, we were also trying to scenario plan um, for the business and just to see where we were going to be in two months, three months, four months time. And um, I think, like Mihaela mentioned, um, we were very focused on keeping people in jobs because we wanted to make sure that our uh, contract with our people was maintained. Um, and that was, that was um, I won't say as important as safety because we would never compromise it, but it was a really important, um, important factor. So the learnings we got um, were, were huge and we don't have time for, for, for all of that um, today. Um, but I'm gonna pick out, I think, uh, uh, four. Um, we learned that our decision making uh, was faster. So we just didn't have time to the, or the luxury of debating things that we would normally do. We all enjoy sat around in the nice office and sort of, you know, bouncing ideas off each other. And if something's a bit difficult, we can park it to the next meeting maybe or kick it down the road a little bit. Well, COVID was full of situations that you just could not do that. And that put a real energy into, uh, into the team. And also, we benefited from um, the diversity of viewpoint in the team um, to make some of these key decisions. Because we've got, um, in, the, in the management team of Heineken Romania, we have a Russian, an Italian, um, a Dutch guy, there's me from the UK, um, and of course, Romanians. So you really saw the cultures, uh, the national cultures coming through the situation, and it allowed us actually to make much more balanced decisions where we needed to because you saw different attitudes to to that um, uh, balancing act sometimes between business continuity um, and also risk. Um, I think as well we also saw uh, an offshoot which was more empowerment in the business. So whilst the leadership of the business were busy focused on um, you know the here and now with the pandemic, actually the rest of the business could, within a certain context, get on with um, what they were meant to do and we weren't interfering. So I think, um, I think there was a, um, an empowerment aspect as well. And then finally I will draw out um, a communication and I'll, I'll come on to that in a second because I think it's an important one. Um, a communication initially we knew just wasn't good enough or we knew it wasn't gonna be good enough. Let's put it that way, and I'll expand. So I've chosen this image because um, this is sort of one aspect of leadership that I think is just gonna become more and more important um, as time goes on. I'm not gonna put a time period on it, but this one is one that we all need to really, really dial up. And I've chosen Trump because um, Whatever you think of the politics, uh, um, uh, that's not why I'm here either. Um, he will be, I think, 
seen as one of the great modern communicators. And he is um, a, an expert, actually, I would say a natural expert, at personalization, telling the story, knowing his audience, he really knows who he's speaking to, he knows their fears, he knows their motivations, and he speaks to them directly. And the way he does that, the use of social media uh, in that position, the way he does it has never been done before. And he also does it with immediacy. It's here and now. He's got 90 million uh, Twitter followers. He's Barak's still number one, so he's got some, uh, got some way to go. But he uses the media very differently. And when we were in the COVID um, uh, situation, uh, right at the beginning, um, I was speaking to my colleague uh, in Italy, actually, because, you know, clearly Italy were a few weeks ahead of us, and that was a good but scary uh, sign of, of what was to come. And um, I was hearing how he was communicating with the business, and I thought, I'm not doing enough. I, need, I can't rely on the town halls and the emails and the work Facebook and the cascade type approach. I need, I need to be more immediate with my communication and I need to be more personal because people are not just looking for facts and information, they're looking for a feeling of consistency, stability. They want to know that the business understands them and they want to know what the business is thinking. And the best way that I can think to do that is I started to write to the business every day. So every day at the same time, I would write a, um, effectively an email that would go out. Um, we made sure that colleagues who didn't have email in the breweries got the daily briefing every day. And we did that consistently. And okay, not everybody responds to it in the same way. So I'm not pretending that people are waiting for the, uh, uh, for the daily briefing. That's not my point. But I know from individual feedback, people who have reached out, um, just actually from fairly deep in the business, that it's something people appreciate because it gave them a sense of uh, what is going on and, and security sometimes that they really needed. And that's something that I'm going to take forward. Um, we've now reduced the frequency. I don't do it every day. I do it once a week. Um, but as we move into the new reality, that is something that I'm going to keep doing because I think it's a really powerful tool um, that you can uh, use as a leader. And I would obviously encourage everybody to think about what that means uh, for them in their roles. Um, comfort with discomfort. This storytelling aspect is going to become more important also because the world has just got more and more uncertain. So again, the world was changing, right? The mega trends of um, social change, economic change, digitalization, migration, um, they all continue. Um, but COVID has certainly given us a context for the next three to five years, I would say, at least, of a higher degree of instability and a higher degree of uncertainty. And I think it's important to reflect on what that's going to mean for, for us as leaders because it's going to require a different type of leadership. The, um, the dilemma that it creates, the conflict that it creates, I would describe as we're going to need clearer choices. Resources are going to be scarce. There will be opportunities everywhere. So it's not, a, it's not a dark picture I'm painting in terms of that. There'll be opportunities everywhere. But the resources that most businesses have got will be much more scarce. And that's going to mean leaders are going to have to make tougher choices, sometimes painful choices. And that means you're going to see if your leaders can sail the ship in good weather and if they can sail, sail the ship in bad weather. And when you're taking those choices, it's going to be really important that the people in the organization understand the why, which is why it comes back to, uh, to storytelling as well, because these things, um, these things are all linked. The, the other thing to pull out here is it's going to require flexibility and adaptability. So in a very uncertain world, not only do you need to make clear choices, but you need to be prepared to change them. And if you have a hierarchical culture, um, let's say, I'd say Romania is a, tends to be a more hierarchical culture um, uh, nationally, that's quite tough. 
because people are used to sometimes as leaders making the call, that's how it is, point the direction, and we all go, right? Well, actually, that direction is going to change. You're going to need to uh, course correct much more often, and that's going to mean you're going to need more humility in your leadership. You're going to have to be prepared to say, I was wrong. Things have changed. We're going to have to do it this way or that way. And that's going to be, I think, a really um, important dynamic. To help you do that, I think we'll all need to have our heads up more as well, looking much more at the outside world, bringing the outside in to our businesses. And I know that speaking personally, sometimes I can get very focused on, on, on what we're doing and our business and, and maybe a bit what's going on in the industry, but sometimes I need to do better at really anticipating what is going on in the wider context, not just in Romania, but also outside Romania as well. Because as we try and cope with this volatility, the better we can do that, the better we'll be able to manage the, um, the uncertainty. And then purpose and togetherness. So um, what we've seen in the last six months in, in our business, and I hope you've seen it in yours, is, um, is a real uh, strengthening of community. Now, beer is a local business. So Heineken is a multinational player. However, our, our businesses are in the communities. We, we, we buy materials from local farmers, we brew the beer, we have generations of people working in our uh, breweries. We're, we're interconnected, that's the essence um, of our business, it's local. And in the, uh, in the crisis, we've seen it really being strengthened in a way that we didn't always expect. So we've seen um, colleagues spontaneously doing collections and buying computers for uh, kids in their local communities that, that can't afford them and they're, they're, they're homeschooling. And they're doing that from their, from their own pocket. We've seen people, um, uh, Heineken, by the way, has also donated, I should say that, um, we have. Um, we've seen colleagues uh, sharing videos and images of their you know, uh, exercising at home and um, walking their pets and their kids and things that they're doing to, to stop themselves going uh, a little bit crazy in, uh, uh, in lockdown. There's been, I think, overall, a real sense of togetherness and that we will get through this um, together. It's not been perfect, but sort of my challenge is going to be how do we harness that power beyond just, let's call it, the, the, the pandemic period. Because there's really something in that, I think. And again, I think it will, it will equate to better results. And my last point is around the power of thank you. This is a very simple one. Um, and this is not the British guy trying to remind everybody what good manners is, because it, it is just good manners. Um, I think it's really important. And probably with the pace of the agenda for all of us, we can forget it. And also, there's nothing worse than hearing a hollow thank you. Thanks, guys, for all the hard work, right? We, we, we all do it. Yeah, we really appreciate the hard work, yeah? You need to mean it. And I think when you see your colleagues keeping the business running, when there's a guy on a forklift truck doing a full shift with a mask on in 35 degrees, or there's a sales guy walking into stores, at times probably uh, feeling um, unsafe, probably, yeah, even with all the protection, to make sure that our products are there for the shoppers to buy, you really do mean it. You really do appreciate it because you realize that, yeah, ultimately, your business um, is about those people. So I'll finish with that one. Um, you know, let's not forget to, um, to say thank you. What's the message? Thank you so much for your speech. It's very, very interesting to see how things are really inside, because from outside, always looks bright. <laughs> are cineva vreo întrebare pentru Dan Robinson? We don't have any questions, but I would like to ask you something because I'm just curious. Who are the people who influenced you most during your career? Um. 
I, I'm I'm not a big reader of leadership books and 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 that sort of thing. It's not not really my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, I've been I've been really lucky um, because I've had good bosses. Um, so mainly, I've had one bad boss, but 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 one and a half bad bosses. But 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 generally, I've had good bosses, um, and they're all they've all been very different. So I think if you if you listen to them, then um, then that's that's been a big help. Um, I also work with good people, so I make sure that I'm I'm trying to take a little bit from everybody um, uh, because I think ultimately you, you you're more rounded. Thank you so much for your answer.